Now, constants, as the name suggests, are things that cannot change. They remain the same whenever the program is running. Clearly, the pin that I have the LED attached to here is not going to change whilst I'm running the program. Also, the pin that the button is attached to isn't going to change whilst I'm running the program. However, as well as constants, which don't change, we can have variables, which can change whilst the program is running. I'm going to create an example of an integer variable, and we're going to call it time delay. And we're going to start it off as equal to a thousand. Notice it's almost exactly the same as our constant definition. It just doesn't have the word const at the front of it. So this number called time delay equal to a thousand can be changed whilst the program runs. But it starts off with a number of a thousand stored in it. Now, the best way I've come up with to think about variables is to imagine a bookcase filled with boxes. When you want to declare a variable, like we just did in our program, we take one of these boxes off the bookshelf and we write the name of the box as a label on the front. So we just created one called time delay. We put it back on the bookshelf. Now, whenever I want to look in that box, I simply look on the bookshelf of all my possible variables and I look for the one called time delay. I can then open the box and see what's stored inside it. If we think back to our program, we had stored the number 1000 inside this time delay box. Every time I now look in the box called time delay, I can see what number's in there. At the moment, still 1000. If we look back to our program, we can see that we've stored the number 1000 in this box called time delay. It's also important to note that these boxes come in different sizes. The size of box is dependent on the type of information I want to store in it. In this case, I have chosen an integer sized box. That means the box that I'm storing my number in is the right size for an integer. And I know that however big my integer is, as long as it's still an integer, it will fit in that box. Now let's try making use of that variable. We're going to replace our delays down here, instead of always being a delay of a thousand, we're going to replace them with delays of time delay. What that means is whenever it gets to this command, it will look in the box called time delay, find out what number is inside it, in this case 1000, and that is how many milliseconds it will delay for. Of course, what we've done so far hasn't actually changed anything about how the program will run. It will still pause for one second after turning the LED on and after turning the LED off, just like it did before. But now we're going to see why variables are really useful. To show you this properly, we're actually going to go back to the simplest version of Blink that doesn't include any references to the button pin. like that. And what we're going to do here is before we go back around the loop, we are going to change the value in time delay. The way we're going to do that is using this command here. Now, the mathematicians amongst you will be getting very anxious at this point because it's clear that there is no mathematical way that time delay can equal time delay minus 100. That's simply impossible. That's not what this little symbol here means in this case. It doesn't mean it equals. It means assign it to be. Assign it to be. So what that means is assign the new value in our box called time delay to become equal to the old value of the box in time delay minus 100. 
Now, the old value in the box time to delay at the moment is the value that we started with, 1,000. So if we take that value of 1,000, subtract 100 from it, we get 900, and we store that number 900 back in the box time delay. So we've taken the number out of the box, taken 100 away from it, and put that new number back in the box. So now time delay equals 900. So that when it goes back around the loop here and turns the LED on again, it will only turn it on for 900 milliseconds, not a whole second. Then it'll turn it off for 900 milliseconds. And then it'll do this again. So it will take the 900 milliseconds minus 100 from it to get 800 milliseconds, put 800 back in the box, time delay, and loop round again, delaying for 800 milliseconds each time. What I'd like you to do now is upload this program to your Arduino and see what happens when you run it. After a little while, you might notice something a bit odd. If you can figure out what that is, fantastic. If not, Come back to the next video and I'll explain what's going on.